the sea, a sandy beach, children's laughter, lazy purple jellyfish the size of a soccer ball are circling in shallow water. On the opposite shore, you can see the cozy Ukrainian town of Ochavik. So it was in the Kinburn spirit before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. After February 24, 2022, the Kinburn Peninsula and the adjacent Dynaper Bay became a boiling cauldron. For nine months, the Russians tried to boil the Ukrainian medium landing script, Yuri Olafarenko, in it. After the end of the war, this ship may have the title invulnerable to its name. Now we will tell you about some of the exploits of the legendary Ukrainian ship. But most importantly, we will reveal the details of one crazy landing operation of Ukrainian paratroopers in the Kinburn Spit. To understand the uniqueness of the case, we suggest taking a look at the map. The Kinburn Peninsula is divided between the Kherson and Nikolaev regions. The peninsula has a land connection with the Kherson region. This territory is occupied. You can get to the Nikolaev region only by sea through the Dynaper Bay. Until November 11th, part of the Nikolaev region between the Dynaper and Ingle was also occupied. For the Ukrainian military, the Kinburn Peninsula is of great strategic importance for the liberation of the south of the country. For the Russian army, the value of the peninsula also lies in its geographical position. From here, it is convenient to bombard Ochaka with cheap artillery ammunition instead of expensive cruise missiles. The Sand Spit is part of the Kinburn Peninsula. It is located opposite Ochaka, 2.5 miles across the strait. This is a narrow strip of sand and grass, squeezed on all sides by water. Obviously, there is nowhere for the landing force to hide, and nowhere for the infantry or artillery to gain a foothold. But in the depths of the peninsula, there are protected forests, where it is convenient to keep the defense. The Ukrainians defended themselves for a long time on the Kinburn Peninsula. The Russians took control of the area only in the middle of summer. The offensive of the Russian forces was carried out from the Kherson region, which they occupied in the first days of the war. However, the life of the invaders on the peninsula was not calm. In front of their positions remained unbroken Ochakov and Maysky Island. The 73rd Naval Special Operations Center of the Armed Forces of Ukraine is stationed there. The K-4 Yuri Olafarenko took refuge there. This is one of the few surviving Ukrainian ships. It got its name in honor of the captain of the first rank of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, commander of the 73rd Marine Special Purpose Center, who died near Maripol in 2015. With the support of coastal defense, K-4 Yuri Olafarenko almost single-handedly controls the Dynaper Bay. Sometimes it seems that this ship is guarded by some authoritative sea god. The Ukrainian ship more than once passed through the dense fire of Russian artillery, like a magician between raindrops. For nine months of the war, the K-4 Yuri Olafarenko did not allow the ships of the Russian Black Sea Fleet to enter the Dynaper Bay. The Russians controlled 70% of the coast of this backwater, but the Ukrainians controlled the entrance to it. As already mentioned, after the capture of the Kinburn Peninsula, the Russians got the opportunity to fire at Ochaka from artillery and MLRS. The range of conventional ammunition for the MLRS system is 12.5 to 18.5 miles. New extended range unguided munitions achieve up to 25 miles. For nine months, Russian grads cruised the peninsula and fired indiscriminately on Ukrainian territory. Every day, K-4 Yuri Olafarenko and the 73rd Naval Special Operations Center of the Armed Forces of Ukraine were subjected to massive strikes. Civilians of the city of Ochakov also got hit. The landing ship is not designed for combat. However, it still tried to resist the shelling. On board the K-4 Yuri Olafarenko, there is a multiple launch rocket system from two ancient Polish-made WM-18 launchers. Each installation has 18 guides for unguided rockets, Salvo 36 missiles. Each mount contains 90 rounds of ammunition. The system must be manually reset. Age and outdated weapons are a big problem for the ship. K-4 Yuri Olafarenko belongs to a series of landing ships of Project 770, 771, and 773. They were built 50 years ago in socialist Poland by order of the USSR Navy. 
The maximum firing range of the WM18 installations does not exceed 6 miles. Therefore, in order to shell the positions of Russian troops on the Kinburn Peninsula, the landing ship had to get very close to the coast of the peninsula. This is practically a 100% risk, because there was nothing to cover up the sorties of the K-4 Yuri Oliferenko. But every time the Ukrainian sailors did it to protect Ochaka from shelling. The situation changed dramatically with the beginning of the counteroffensive of the Ukrainian troops. After the destruction of warehouses, bridges, and roads, Russian positions on the right bank of the Dnieper crumbled. There was a risk of encirclement. The Russian commander Surovikin ordered his troops to lead the bridgehead. The command of the 73rd Naval Special Operations Center of the Armed Forces of Ukraine immediately planned a landing operation on the Kinburn Peninsula. The key participant in this operation was the K-4 Yuri Oliferenko. It must be said that the Ukrainians are constantly practicing landing operations. In fact, the Ukrainian Maritime Special Operations Center is an analog of the U.S. Navy SEALs. The Special Operations Center of the Armed Forces of Ukraine closely cooperates with instructors from the U.K. and the States. The specialists of the center are involved in absolutely all military operations of Ukraine against the Russian Black Sea Fleet. In February 2022, the fighters of the center repulsed the Russian airborne assault on Kolpakino aircraft and saved Nikolia from occupation. Among other impressive achievements, we note the destruction of the Putin Bridge in Crimea, the sinking of the cruiser Moskva, the liberation of Snake Island, the attack by water drones of Russian ships in the Sevastopol Bay. Before the war, Putin called the Special Operations Center of the Armed Forces of Ukraine a threat to the Black Sea Fleet. Shoigu probably wanted to reassure his boss, so on March 5th, he reported on the destruction of the Ukrainian Maritime Center. Obviously, he lied. On the evening of November 13th, the K-4 Yuri Oliferenko left Ochaka in the direction of the Kinburn Spit. This date and time were not chosen by chance. These days, the weather deteriorated on the Black Sea and a storm began. Poor visibility prevented Russian Orlan reconnaissance drones from detecting the approaching landing craft. The storm forced the Russian ships of the Black Sea fleet to move away from the coast. K-4 Yuri Oliferenko is able to take on board two platoons of Marines and five units of heavy armored vehicles. An alternative from equipment can be either three towed artillery systems with tractors, or nine trucks, or 19 pickups. Usually, the task of the landing force is to capture and hold the bridgehead until the main forces arrive. But for this, the K-4 Yuri Oliferenko would have to make several trips. At that time, it was impossible. Therefore, the landing operation did not involve the capture of a bridgehead. The task of the Ukrainian Special Forces was to destroy Russian artillery, MLRS, and warehouses on Kinburn Island. There was no equipment or artillery on board. For the landing, a point was chosen on the beach of the Kinburn Spit from the side of the Dnieper Bay. The approach to the coastline was carried out at a right angle. K-4 Yuri Oliferenko quietly entered and, due to inertia, buried its nose in soft, sandy soil. Landing on an unequipped coast is a very important part of landing. There is always a risk that the ship will enter the ground too tightly and will not be able to return to the water. It's not enough just to calculate. The intuition of the commander is also important. The ship at this moment becomes a continuation of the body of the commander, who must feel the ground as they feel it with their bare feet. Before hitting the shore, the K-4 commander gave the command to throw out the stern anchor, which serves as the fulcrum for the ship. Pulling the anchor cable, the ship then returns to the water and quickly leaves. Usually, the anchor point is 30 to 35 yards from the shore, but here the water is shallow so the anchor was dropped about 100 yards from the coastline. In peacetime, parents with small children usually rested on the Kinburn Spit, who are delighted with the shallow water. It is possible that the commander of the Ukrainian K-4 was also here with his family, so he is well acquainted with the local soil. Yuri Oliferenko successfully completed the landing and moved away from the coast. This took several minutes. As a rule, the landing ship is covered by support vessels, in this operation, the cover function was performed by small landing craft with fighters from the Maritime Center. The paratroopers divided into groups and hid in the depths of the peninsula. 
the task had to be completed before dawn. One group was responsible for destroying the warehouses, another was to destroy the guns, and the third was to mine the country roads around the Russian strongholds. The operation went on all night. All night long, explosions rumbled on the Kinburn Peninsula, and small arms chirped. Late in the evening, pro-Russian forums screamed about the capture of the Kinburn Peninsula by Ukrainian troops. The Ukrainian media, at the request of the command, remained silent. Until now, the operation is considered secret. We do not know the names or call signs of the fighters and commanders of the special forces. Even the name of the K-4 commander is kept secret. We find the results of the landing in the list of Russian casualties. During that night, 11 artillery systems and an ammunition depot were destroyed. These guns terrorized the inhabitants of Ochaka for nine months. It is known that the paratroopers successfully returned to the base in Ochaka. K-4 Yuri Oliverenko covered the retreat with the fire of their WM-18 installations. At least 36 volleys were fired. After completing the task, the special forces evacuated on boats. This is indicated by individual frames against the background of the rising sun. After this landing operation, the Russians cannot fully use their bridgehead on the Kinburn Peninsula. The delivery of new howitzers, MLRS, and ammunition is associated with a great risk. After the armed forces of Ukraine ousted Russian troops from the right bank of the Kherson region, Ukrainian artillery took fire control of the only road on the peninsula. In fact, the Kinburn Peninsula has become a gray area, even with the presence of Russian units there. The armed forces of Ukraine are clearly repeating the tactics that helped them liberate Kherson. First, Ukrainian artillery and saboteurs break the enemy's logistics. Then the Russian grouping on the peninsula will be surrounded and destroyed, or will leave their position to avoid encirclement. We will know about it very soon. Subscribe so you don't miss anything.